Amazing. If you've got a Bible, you might want to open it to Philippians chapter 4. I want to briefly look at what faith looks like under fire. How can our faith not just survive, how can it thrive when it experiences hardship, challenge, when it experiences fire? And we're going to look at the wisdom from Scripture, wisdom of the Apostle Paul speaking this letter to the Philippians. Like We've got all sorts of wisdom of how to survive this moment, practical wisdom about what Washing your hands regularly for 20 seconds. Social distancing two meters apart. That's why our worship team, you know, we're here in the room, but we're quite far away from one another. Uh, other th- measures of, of self-isolating. So much wisdom of how to survive. But spiritually, how can we not just survive but thrive in this moment? So let's read this. This is the Apostle Paul, Philippians chapter 4, 4 to 13. You might want to read it aloud in your living rooms. Paul says, rejoice in the Lord always. I'll say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God that transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. He then goes on to say this, for I've learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need and I know what it is to have plenty. I've learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want, whether I have lots of toilet roll or none. I'm trying to contextualize this here. And he closes by saying, I can do all this through him who gives me strength. There are some nuggets here. Now, you would think that maybe this is Paul speaking to the church in Philippi at a time, a high point in his ministry. Life's great. He's planting churches across the Mediterranean. Everything's going well. But actually, these words are spoken when Paul is in prison. He's under house arrest in Rome. In fact, we get the first indication throughout the New Testament that this is the moment where Paul is contemplating his own death. He's not sure he's going to survive. He's writing to a church in northern Greece, Philippi, that they're experiencing persecution, hardship, like suffering at the hands of the Roman Empire that's trying to crush the church at the time. So into that context, he writes these words. And he says, rejoice in the Lord. This is incredible stuff. So here's a few insights um, from Paul's wisdom. Then number one, cultivate joy in the Lord. Like this is more than just joy in your circumstances. Like this is hard right now. These are challenging times. They're frightening times for many of us. There's going to be economic hardship and sickness. We're feeling afraid. And yet Paul says it is possible to know joy in this moment. Because where does the joy come from? It is in the Lord. Incredible. Listen to these words. This is Pete Gregg writing. I've quoted this before at KXC. I love this. He says, suffering is inevitable in life. It's inevitable in this next season, but joy is not. So relentlessly pursue joy today. Laugh often, listen well, celebrate the wonder of the smallest, most ordinary things. Tragedy comes to us regardless, but joy is a butterfly, an elusive melody waiting to be named. Our surprising, unsolemn duty, therefore, is not just to weep at life's pain, but to seek and savor its bounty with fierce delight, to marvel at the simple magnificence of the mundane, the ephemeral light through a dirty window, that eternal moment between the first and second mouthfuls of Bonoffi pie. And let's just hang there for a moment. Light a fire tonight. Make the coffee strong. Stretch your limbs. Write someone a letter with a real actual pen. Play Love Supreme by John Coltrane. And should you happen to see a tree bedecked in lights or an ornate tattoo or the iridescent flash of pink on a pigeon's head, stop and stare in wide-eyed wonder like a child. Hallow the fleeting hours of this sacred pulse with an oratory of sighs and a liturgy of virtual hugs and whoops and laughter. Believe again in the fundamental goodness of stuff, transubstantiated for us receive again this day the blessed sacrament 
what is Peter trying to say? Relentlessly pursue joy. I love these words. This is G.K. Chesterton who said, It's the paradox of history that each generation is converted by the saints who contradict it most. Like, What would it look like for us as the people of God to contradict the spirit of the age, this moment of chronic anxiety? What if we found joy in the Lord? Like found joy by looking above and partnering with what Jesus is doing. We as a staff team, we've been trying to do this. At the end of every working day at 5 p.m., we all conference call one another on Zoom. And we just have a moment of, of fun. We've done limericks, writing limericks about people on the staff team. We've had a quiz. Um, you can probably see on the screen right now. We did an online workout, which was super fun. Some of our hubs are doing this. Some of them went for a virtual drink at Camino because they missed the bar in King's Cross that much. Let's relentlessly pursue joy in this season. Secondly, Paul says, seek peace in God's presence. He says, do not be anxious. Like, that is crazy. Like, is Paul pastorally inept? He's saying to people in Philippi who are experiencing incredible persecution, he's like, don't be anxious. How could Paul say that? Well, he says it because just preceding that phrase, he says, the Lord is near. Like, let your gentleness be evident to all. Like, we can live differently as the people of God at this time because we know that God isn't far off. He's not a distant deity. He has drawn near to us. Like, if Jesus is in the boat with us, even if it's incredibly stormy around, if Jesus is in the boat, and he can rest in the middle of the storm, then we can rest too because we know that God is sovereign. He has authority over the storm. So I want you to know, if you're feeling like fear levels rising, I want you to know that the Lord is near and it is possible to know a peace that passes human understanding in this season, but it's going to be found in the presence of God. So before you wake up and check your news feed and your social media feed, why don't you have a few moments in the presence of God and experience this peace that passes understanding. I love these words. This is Corrie Ten Boom, who experienced life in a concentration camp in Nazi Germany. And she wrote these words, if you look at the world, you'll be distressed. If you look within, you'll be depressed. If you look at God, you'll be at rest. Like this is a moment for us to look upwards, heavenwards and experience rest. So cultivate joy, seek peace in God's presence, find contentment in Christ. All of us in the coming weeks and months, we're going to experience higher levels of discontent. We're going to get frustrated. Some of us are going to be living with like kids and we're going to be homeschooling and trying to hold down a job and and do life, you know, with your spouse. It's going to be pretty intense. We're going to experience frustration and moments of discontent. Here's my encouragement. Don't fill that void with rubbish. One of my friends said this to me this week, great wisdom. He said, this is not the moment to get addicted to Netflix, porn or, or chocolate, right? Don't fill the emptiness with rubbish. That void, that discontent, bring that into the presence of Jesus. Bring your boredom into the presence of Jesus. If we did that, I think unbelievable kingdom creativity would emerge. These are the words of Jeremiah Burroughs. He says, contentment is not by addition, but by subtraction. Seeking to add a thing will not bring contentment. Instead, subtracting from your desires until you are satisfied only with Christ... That brings contentment. Things are being stripped away right now. What if we bring ourselves, even the boredom, the frustration, the discontent, and we bring it to Jesus and allow his spirit to fill us? Final thing then. Expect the unexpected arrival of the kingdom of God. Listen to how Paul finishes this letter to the church in Philippi. Remember, he's writing this from the nerve center of the Roman Empire, like Caesar's palace. That's where he's based. And he says this. Chapter 4, verse 22, all God's people here send you greetings, especially those who belong to Caesar's household. This is so subversive. He's basically saying in the nerve center of the empire, where you're most likely to be worshipping Caesar as Lord, some of Caesar's own household are beginning to look upwards and say, no, 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 Jesus is Lord. And if the kingdom of God is breaking out in the nerve center of the Roman empire, then it can break out anywhere. 
Right? Let's be a people that expect the unexpected arrival of the kingdom of God at this time. Why? Because Paul says that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. He is the God of the impossible. So here's the wisdom that comes through scripture, through the words of the apostle Paul. How do we not just survive this season, but how does our faith come alive? How do we thrive? We cultivate joy in the Lord, relentlessly pursue joy. We seek peace in God's presence. Why? We know the Lord is near. He's in the boat with us. He can bring peace in the storm. Thirdly, find contentment in Christ. This isn't the moment for other addictions. Bring the discontent and the boredom into the presence of Jesus. And fourthly, expect the unexpected arrival of the kingdom of God. What we're going to do, we're going to have a few moments now to do what we always do at a normal Sunday gathering. We're going to just open ourselves to the Spirit of God. You might want to stand right now and just do what you'd normally do. Maybe open out your hands in a simple posture of receiving. And in the stillness, why don't we invite God to come to bring joy, the joy that comes from the Lord. To bring the peace that passes all understanding. To fill us with deep contentment in Christ and to stir up faith levels that we can expect the unexpected arrival of the kingdom of God. Holy Spirit, would you come now? Holy Spirit, would you come? Fill each living room with your presence. Fill each heart with your presence. For those that are feeling anxious, this would be my encouragement. Maybe just put your hand on your heart and ask God to fill you with this peace that passes human understanding. For those feeling a level of despair right now, why don't you ask God to fill you with joy? Lord, fan into flame the gift of faith in every household. Spirit, would you come now? The band, they're just going to sing a refrain over us so you don't need to sing along let's just wait in this posture of receiving let's invite the spirit of God to fill our hearts to fill our minds to fill our bodies spirit would you come pour out your presence upon us